Hi, my name is Jim Smith. I'm the president and CEO of McKinsey Books. And today I'm making a video on hiring freelance web developers, starting with a detailed requirements document. So first, a little bit about me. I have over 10 years experience building with web development, building web applications. That includes building them myself, as well as internal employees, uh, managing the project, and as well as freelance web developers and outsourcing the development on a site such as Odesk. And I've had some really great su success with using Odesk to uh, outsource my uh, some of my projects, some of the sites that I've built, so it is something I recommend. And so today what I'm going to talk about is a detailed requirements document. And really what this does is it explains in a very detailed way what you are building. It does not address how it's going to be built, but it simply addresses the what. It answers the what question. And I've found that this is one of the most important things just foundationally to start off the project that's very important just to spend a lot of time on this and it's something after you've selected or really after you've shortlisted some contractors that you can share this document with your shortlist and get some questions from them on it and then once you select the contractor of course it becomes uh, the starting point for what they do with uh, the next step is figuring out how it's going to be built and, and the design of, of the web application. So I like to use Google Docs as you see here and I've created this template for your for your convenience and I uh, have a table of contents here and it's refreshable all you have to do is click here and then here and it will refresh based upon these are heading twos here so based upon the heading tags you can you can uh, quickly have your table of contents there so this is just a document that I've built and I've, I've used um, templates uh, I've used a template very very close to this for some of the recent sites that I've built and found it found it useful so all you need to all you need to do since this is read only for you you just need to go to file make a copy and then that'll copy it over to your own Google account so I just want to take a few minutes and go down the list here and what each of these things really means summary of functionality so if you were to describe the website the web application in just a few sentences what would that what would that be what is what is it supposed to do in just you know two or three sentences it's a quick summary definitions every industry has its own set of lingo for example, my industry in, in college textbooks, it's ISBN 13 or ISBN 10 or, you know, book-related book terms like that. What's an international edition or a custom edition, things like that. So you would want to define that there. Next, CSS logo and design of site. It's really detailing out you know, sometimes in the past I've used a CSS template. Uh, Twitter makes one. Uh, at the time that I'm cr making this video, which is early 2013, I think Twitter's Bootstrap is, is still fairly popular. 
you know, I've used that a few times. There's other CSS frameworks out there, so you could define what, what kind of CSS framework you want to use, possibly. And of course, the logo, the, the color scheme of the site, and if there's certain requirements about the design and, and the layout of the site, you'd want to you'd want to put it in this section about what's required there. Sometimes you'll want to separately hire a web designer to come up with some mock-ups. Uh, some mock-ups of what the site, what you want the site to look like. Because when you hand this off to a developer, they may or may not be very good at design. So that's definitely an option is 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 to uh, separately get a someone that's really good at design to to create some mock-ups and the developer can slice and dice that from there into some CSS and things alright next header navigation footer so that's kind of part of the layout and framework but what specifically needs to go in the header footer and in the navigation as well and how how do you envision what what it, what is the navigation what must the navigation have SEO you know I, I think um, like title tags or the URL structure or the you know the meta descriptions or some of the key SEO strategies you want to have need to be defined here so it's very clear to the developer what your expectation is for really optimi you know search engine optimization there customer facing pages so really you really I will in this in this section I will list out every page that is on the site if the site has a contact us page, an FAQ page, an about us page, the home page, list out every customer facing page. Maybe there's a list of five pages, 10 pages, 15 or whatever. And so it's very clear from the customer facing side, from the public facing side, what, what uh, will be there. And then I'll, that'll kind of lead into maybe a flow chart flowchart in, in terms of you can click sometimes I'll use um, some Microsoft tools to create a flowchart so letting the developer know what kind of flow you expect in terms of you can click from this page to this page or kind of maybe the checkout flow or however your web ap application is built there, there's going to be some sort of flow where users click or go from page to page so that can be uh, put in some sort of uh, sometimes I'll, I'll create a PDF and then I'll link I'll link I'll, I like to link this document to other documents too and as long as you shared it correctly that's fine just make sure if you're linking to other documents those documents are going to be viewable by the, the whoever you're sharing this with so CRUD operations, create, read, update, delete. And this you can you can take this into even further into use cases sometimes. Um, but this basically means that you know you may have a way to just thinking of a of a site that I that I recently worked on, you know, a way to create a coupon code and the read is you need to be able to view a list of those coupon codes and then update you know maybe you need to maybe you created a coupon code at 10 percent off but you need to change it to 12 percent so there's a way to update a coupon code and likewise to delete it if, if that if that is necessary so thinking through from that standpoint is very helpful for all the operations both you know both public facing that the customer can do as well as next is the admin panel and thinking through all the CRUD operations what can the users create you know what you know in that coupon code example what can they view 
and then update and sometimes view you can sort things different ways and things like that so really thinking through all that is going to be part of the detailed requirements admin panel most web applications have some sort of admin area uh, just like WordPress has an uh, you know an admin panel that you can log into and administer certain certain things about the website whether that's the content or use ad users or various things detailing out all the pages you want in your admin panel as well is going to be important roles and security so both on the customer facing side as well as the admin side what are the different roles and what of those accounts and what are they allowed to access for example so you may have an admin panel that you know you want a certain person to be able to log in and be able to create other admins for example but other another role is just they can log into the admin area but only have access to certain things you know WordPress does this you know you can you have an author a contributor an editor and, and so on <clears throat> reporting most sites will need some sort of reporting sometimes that can be sent out as an email or you know I'm talking about database reporting you're maybe usually in a web application you're collecting some sort of data you're storing some sort of data and think through how you need to be able you know what needs to be reported on and uh, what kind of format you need that in. Is it a format where you're just viewing the report on in the admin panel or is it you need a weekly email that's that that goes out to everyone that's in a certain role or something so think of through what reporting you need. I worked with a developer one time that we were on a completely different page in terms of form validation and error messages um, yeah, so being clear, you know, I think of a typical registration form, you know, and being very clear that what kind of, when they hit submit at the bottom or when they hit create account at the bottom, what, what you expect to happen there, just being very clear, because that allows you, again, this allows you to go back to the developer, the contractor later, or the freelancer, allows you to go back to them and say okay in section 12 C it said the form must do this and show error messages you know kind of goes into usability as well is there are certain components of form validation and, and proper error messages that will make the site usable. And I've just found it's best to be very explicit about what you expect there. Lo by logging here I mean that when errors happen it's some, sometimes very useful to specify that you want a certain um, you know a certain level of logging and uh, there's a uh, there's a lot that can be done there, but my main intent when I when I've put that in is is to make sure that the developer knows that I will be I will be kind of managing the site and very active in in look you know if something happens I wouldn't be able to investigate and that includes looking at a log file and looking at stack traces and things so. If if you're that level of, of uh, site in that level of site ownership where you want to be able to dig into an error and see see what the cause was and request logging, email alerts. This is you know if there's a critical error on the site or something's down, you know you wouldn't be able to get an email. Mobile. There's a lot that could be done here. I think just thinking through how your site needs to look or uh, look or operate in the mobile space is at least important. I mean, this, you know, I, I could spend a lot more time on this. I know there's some, at the time I'm recording this video, of course, eight, there's HTML5, 
which offers some amount of uh, mobile friendly uh, views so whether or not you know whether or not you uh, you know a, a mobile site in of itself is likely a, a different project but sometimes also for example Twitter bootstrap I've seen that it can look very well on an you know it it can um, render very well on an Android phone for example so certain CSS frameworks will do better in the mobile space as well so that's something to consider next installation just being very clear what is required from the developer in terms of installation when they're done when they're done um, what is expected to do they do the install on the server or what maintenance I just threw that in there because after go live what is required in terms of maintenance and maybe thinking through things like oh I don't know archiving old data you know I've had situations where there's 500 million rows in a table and there be it becomes a slowdown issue you know so maintenance and archiving old data could be uh, you know, it could be a requirement. I found that once I shortlist, once I shortlist applicants, um, they start asking really great, great questions about these requirements. And there's always something I've forgotten to list out. And so I build out this Q and A section. And uh, at a certain point, it's I found that uh, it's best that I freeze the requirements. Of course, once you hire someone, you don't want to keep adding more and more scope to the requirements. You're you're going to uh, frustrate your developer, and it's going to cause mass mass confusion if you keep editing this as the project is going. So you have to freeze. You you must freeze the requirements at some point in time and be clear very clear with the contractor when that happens but putting in Q&A's from the original job post I found helpful and then this is something I, I just threw in here as optional I found it useful and I've used Snagit TechSmith.com makes a tool called Snagit that I use and you know if you have some competitor if you're building a website and there are some competitor sites that might be helpful to do a video walkthrough and say, hey, you know, I like this part of what my competitor does. I don't like this part of what he does. And this other competitor, I really like this, but you know, do do this and this, but not that. So that's the that's the idea. Just give a developer a little bit more about what uh, what you like and don't like. And that's about it. Please. Uh, Leave uh, questions or comments, and thank you very much.